pour la bande originale du jeu, on a essayé d'être très... Pour le du jeu, nous essayons d'être très proche de ce qui est fait dans le film. Nous étions constamment demandé à chaque fois dans le jeu, pourquoi nous mettons de la musique ici Qu'est-ce que ça va dire Donc nous nous focalisons sur mettre de la musique pour apporter une émotion qui est interactive et supporte le personnage. Je suis désolé, chérie. Je suis désolé. Je suis désolé. Tu sais que je t'aime, tu sais que je t'aime. We make games that are very narrative. We're really into interactive drama. So the soundtrack also had to go in that direction, supporting the three characters' very different stories. We really wanted three colors, three musical sound identities, and from there, having three composers made sense, since the story of Kara, Marcus, and Connor are all completely different. You recognize him? It's Carlos Ortiz. For Connor, we wanted a soundtrack that could be very cold and very um, mechanical, very machine-esque somehow. For Kara, we wanted a soundtrack that would be very moving and emotional. It was about the quest for identity, but it was also a journey about love and empathy. And for Marcus, we wanted something epic, some, something that would really represent the grand aspect of his quest. And we were very fortunate to find three incredibly talented composers and uh, working with them has been a dream honestly my name is philip shepherd and i'm a composer and a cellist and a producer and today we're at abbey road studio one which is my favorite studio in the world and today we're recording the soundtrack for cara from become human So when I compose a big project, I often travel just to kind of get out you know, and get some fresh air and some inspiration. And I go um, hiking and traveling in Montana a lot. I had a, a log fire in the room that I was staying in and the flames were kind of making absolutely direct music. And it became the basis for Cara's theme. And it sounds something like this. Now, over the top of that, I found a little theme that just seemed to fit over the top, which is taking Cara's name, Cara, Cara, and just using like a two-syllable motif, and it sounds like this. Time that's fitting over. So it kind of works in lots of levels, and in fact, every single theme in the score has one of those elements built into it, and it becomes sort of the DNA of every single tune. For me, writing this theme for Cara, I actually had to tap in to what it feels like to be a father to daughters. I really had to tap into everything I feel about my daughters. I'm thinking, well, if I had to write music for them and that sense of trying to protect them but also give them the freedom, that's totally where it came from. Because each composer has been given the sort of narrative responsibility for very different characters, I haven't had to sort of go into other styles. I can actually be very loyal to this particular character and sort of hopefully encapsulate her. But it means also I've suddenly become very connected to this character. And if for some reason it goes to game over early, I'm getting mortified. <laughs> you know? They're over there! Starting a new project for me personally, it's always finding the right tone, finding the right color, I like to call it. For me, it's finding that right texture that actually sits against picture really well. One of the biggest things is I created custom instruments for Connor. I pulled out all my vintage synthesizers um, to be able to capture this robotic 
person, if you will. My approach to uh, all of these custom instruments is that I hear the sound in my head. Um, and either I could just come into the piano and just be like, all right, so I'm gonna just get on the computer and just create it. I'd rather be able to play these instruments physically. As soon as you see Connor the first time, there is a really interesting um, thematic idea that you hear, and it's that's just made out of a Moog synthesizer, but completely manipulated in multiple ways. And it's it's robotic. It has a little bit of an emotional to it. it he's he's on his mission, so you feel that as well. So it just kind of gives you that cold, motionless, with a mission in hand that you kind of feel throughout the whole thing. Because the music evolved, one of the things that I was very weary and I was very kind of uh, focused on was the way that the music has to evolve. So my idea behind it was that Connor is a singular android that could at any point become a deviant or could actually stay as an android. So I created a more or less a uh, Connor theme and then I was able to just manipulate it in different aspects of it. Is everything okay, Lieutenant? Chris was on patrol last night. He was attacked by a bunch of deviants. I'm a human being writing for a robot. And throughout uh, Connor's journey, he meets someone, he meets a partner. So how do you deal with a robot feeling? And I've met a partner that I'm gonna work with, uh, or all of a sudden he sees a dead body. Does this robot have an imagination? Does this robot have a feeling? And if yes, how do you translate that into non-emotional music? Uh, so it basically at any point I was just like, I can't do this, I can't do this, and then I just do it. <laughs> property was damaged and fires continued to rage in several major districts. Some people are asking, have androids become a threat to our security? When I first started really digging in on Marcus, um, the one thing that I really tried to capture was the transformation process. You know, Marcus is this android that evolves over the course of the game and, and really goes from kind of figuring out that he's more than just an android. You know, he's starting to develop kind of a human soul in a, in a way. Try to imagine something that doesn't exist, something you've never seen. Now concentrate on how it makes you feel and let your hand drift across the canvas. On the other side of Marcus that I really latched onto was that he almost became a savior for a lot of the other androids in the game. So when I started developing the theme for Marcus, I really made it like a church hymn. I wanted it to be very simple. I wanted to make it a chordal melody. I really wanted to make it almost like a Bach hymn. The tough thing with that is it had to be recognizable. If I made it too complex from a harmonic standpoint, it would be hard, I think, for people to kind of pick it out and recognize it. It's very acoustic derived, but it's, it's also been treated with a lot of uh, effects and things to kind of put it into the space that I, I, I felt the sound should be in. It can be beautiful, it can be haunting, it can be extremely powerful um, from an action standpoint, um, and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. The music is, um, is there, but it's subliminal and it's emotional and people are, are, are feeling it and it's not distracting. And that's tricky with a game like this where you have to have a lot of ins and outs like that where, where the music kind of has to get in and out of these moments. This is a war we're fighting with the humans. If we fail, they'll destroy us. I think the game's been put together so well where I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't ruining the emotion. I gotta be honest, when we first started on this path, I've said, oh man, this could be pretty messy, you know? I mean, it could feel disconnected and 
but I mean, it's amazing how they really guided us and got us to really kind of all be in the same world, but at the same time feeling completely different. So it's really going to stand out and kind of be one of those games where um, people are really going to notice the music and kind of how it was crafted and, you know, and all the hard work that went into making, being able to pull it off in a graceful way. Thank you.